Fantasy Baseball on Deck, everybody. This is Austin, and we're here to talk about Aaron Judge, number one productive player in baseball offensively last season for the New York Yankees, has re-signed to play with the, this, those same old pinstripe Yankees until he's 40 years old. But instead of focusing on what he's going to be when he's 40 years old, let's focus on what he's going to be when he is 31 years old uh, coming up this next season for the New York Yankees. As we see in our ESPN format, he was by far and away the differentiator uh, across all batters. He scored over uh, in standard leagues. He scored over 100 points more than the second place guy. We kind of um, put Shohei on a pedestal over to the side because he's able to go um, both ways and be super effective um, in both directions. But anyways, you know, Freddie Freeman was the number two most productive uh, batter in baseball and, again, scored over 100 points more. But what does that mean coming into the next season? What I always want to do is move all of the player stats into a spreadsheet so I can better manipulate things um, and, you know, differentiate and figure out is this player um, truly as valuable as he looks or is there underlying um, issues? And really with Aaron Judge, there are uh, none other than the overall perspective of I played college football at, in the, at the Division One level, and I was lucky enough to understand that, you know, six foot seven, 285-pound men um, – kind of get hurt a lot. Not that I'm that large of a person, but all my best friends were linemen. And uh, <laughs> some of the tight ends that we had weren't even that heavy and they couldn't stay on the field because it's just big bodies aren't healthy long-term. Now Aaron Judge played, um, you know, most of the games last season. I think he only like sat out like five games total last season. So this is the first time really in his entire career that we've gotten a whole season sample size of what he can do. And man, did he, um, you know, absolutely blow away expectations um, from where he was uh, pre-draft ranked. So just looking at, again, the biggest differentiator, his home runs, um, you know, had essentially – almost 20 more home runs than the next place person and Kyle Schwarber and, you know, 20 plus over everyone under that. Uh, very, very productive player. Obviously we know that even stolen bases, he had 16 stolen bases, which is nothing to scoff at super duper awesome. 310 average. This is, you can ask for more out of a player. Um, and he was probably your third round pick last season. If we look at his total bases, which is the most important stat always to keep track of, um, you know, again, even Austin Riley, who is super productive last season per at bat, um, you know, with it looks like 40 less at bats because he got walked a ton. Um, Aaron Judge was able to outpace Austin Riley Bay around 70 total bases, which is wild, um, even with that, like, 40 less at-bats. So uh, super-duper productive player, obviously. Uh, no really, like, kinks in the armor with uh, Aaron Judge. Super awesome, awesome player. Let's go to uh, total bases per hit, and this specifically focuses on uh, the average productivity of that player per hit. How effective were they? Uh, what was the impact? Aaron Judge ranks number three. And this is kind of where I start to um, differ from his number six average draft position. Is he really worth that average draft position? So if we look at this, I'm going to throw Kyle Schwarber out because he's a statistical nom an anomaly. He's averaged 230 his entire career. Um, always hits home runs, but isn't worth rostering because he strikes out more than anyone in baseball. And he just isn't on base enough to make a difference given that he hit 218 last season. If he didn't hit this many home runs, he would not have been rosterable, much like he hasn't been rosterable his, his career. But like if we look at these guys below him, um, Mike Trout, who is currently ranked uh, 51st overall average draft position, uh, Mike Trout actually averaged – more uh, total bases per hit. So essentially Aaron Judge, who was healthy for the entire year for the first time in his career, um, throughout his 570 at-bats, he was outpaced by Mike Trout when he was healthy. Now Mike Trout obviously only had 438 um, at-bats, so uh, you know more than 100 at bats less and he was on and off the IL, but when he was healthy, you know, he was actually a more productive player than Aaron Judge. 
Aaron Judge's teammate, Anthony Rizzo, um, obviously made a lot happen when he made contact with the ball and actually got a hit. Um, but again, the average is so low with Anthony Rizzo, not going to consider him. And Jordan Alvarez was obviously super productive. Matt Olson, Mookie Betts, um, and then you know, Christian Walker were the remaining most productive players per hit uh, this past season. So how do we kind of uh, value that moving forward? Aaron Judge, obviously worth a first round pick to whoever gets him. Now, before we really start digging into like kind of what it means for the upcoming lineup and things, look at your settings. Um, everyone likes to kind of tinker with the uh, league settings that they have for their fantasy baseball league. Um, everyone's different. So kind of look, obviously in my certain situation like a run scored and a run batted in is the same value but in another league um my run scored uh versus runs uh, batted in is very very different i could actually um, show you guys that if i was it prepared do 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 league settings um, this would be a good example of kind of when you would um, start to value things a little differently. So uh, this league's super weird. So a run scored is two points, um, whereas an RBI is also two points, but you get bonuses. Like home runs is a 10.5 bonus uh, plus the hit. The run scored, it ends up being seven point. Uh, or 17.5 points per basically home run. So Aaron Judge was by far the most um, product productive player in this league. And if you want to get someone who's just guaranteed on an average year going to hit 40 home runs, he might be worth um, you know that first round pick. So if we look at the stats in this league specifically, like the one that's not standardized, this is really the only time that you would differ from the advice that I'm going to uh, going to give you here. So because Aaron Judge hit so many home runs, I mean, he scored like, like 300 more, almost 400 more points than Paul Goldschmidt did. So it really just depends on like which league um, you're in and kind of how you guys score. But make sure that you look at your settings and scoring to really uh, decide, you know, is Aaron Judge worth the draft in your opinion? your first round pick overall. So um, we look at last year's um, productivity and the New York Yankees were number two overall in baseball and runs scored. And I think, and I know it's mostly because of Aaron Judge having a freak year, they wouldn't have been this high without him almost single-handedly carrying them. So if I look back at these stats and scroll down at the bottom, I kind of put a little bit of a metric here. Uh, of all of the Yankees sc runs scored in 2022, uh, Aaron Judge accounted and was responsible for 33% of them. All of the home runs that they hit collectively as an entire team, he was he was 24% of that even. So I don't think that these numbers are uh, sustainable in any way. Let's just say that he has an average year. He's he's a career two eight two eighty hitter at a six foot seven two hundred eighty five pound frame. That's wild. So obviously, like his understanding of the strike zone um, is is pretty unparalleled and makes good contact. Is a super solid player. But let's just assume that he's going to have a year like he always does. So. Um, if he was to have a year like he always does, um, he's going to come back into a lineup that's overall, like in my opinion, mediocre at every single position that's not Aaron Judge. Um, assuming that Aaron, John Carlos Stanton is healthy, Stanton's obviously a true differentiator and he'll way, hit way over 211. Like, Roto Champs good for these visuals, but their, their projections are wild. So <clears throat> if I look at Aaron Judge in the middle of this lineup. Harris, I, I, there's no one around them that I trust. I think Glaber Torres at 25 years old. Obviously, he had 35 home runs um, as a 23-year-old a couple seasons back, which kind of seems like a lifetime at this point. Um, so, you know, he's not – I wouldn't consider him an afterthought. Um, he's – Plenty productive. Josh Donaldson on, is on his way out. He's closer to 40 years old. Uh, Oswaldo Cabrera came up last year, and I think he's going to be a 20-plus home run guy, uh, but is only 23 years old. Um, Keener Falefa is a, a defensive player prodigy who's just you know he'll never leave the lineup because he's so valuable he can play every position and jose trevino went to the all-star game this past season but he was 18th overall in offensive productivity for catchers that just means that he got voted in by the mass yankee 
crowd and maybe even a view, my viewers. I don't hate the Yankees. I just don't think that they're as productive as they could have been, and they had to sign Judge today in order to stay relevant given their uh, their pitching situations and woes from a starting, starting perspective. Um, he does have <clears throat> a little bit of help coming uh, his way, and Anthony Volpe, who was uh, actually voted the uh, batter of the pipeline batter of the year in 2021. Um, he has a hit rating and a power rating both of 60 uh, with an average speed or so. So that's a guy who's going to come up, and you know I think he's going to be more of a. And throughout his career, I think he has the opportunity to possibly be like a five hole hitter. Um, it's just one of those things where like, he's going to, I mean, this kid's 21 years old. Obviously he has the, all the opportunity to gain power and these things. It's just like for this season, looking forward, you know, Anthony Volpe is the best thing coming into that lineup that isn't a free agent already um, that can possibly help. So, uh, you know, what does that mean? I expect Aaron Judge, like every season, to kind of like do what he did in 2021. Um, he's going to get 550 at bats, and he is essentially going to get 39, 40 home runs at what he always does. He's going to score around 100 runs in RBIs um, because that surrounding cast just isn't very good. And let's just say that he has a two, almost a 290 year uh, from a batting average perspective, and hits 40 home runs that's incredible. You could never ask for more from a player, especially no matter where they hit in the lineup. That's like, that is a, an all-star caliber uh, franchise player. Well, if we go to our stats again for the Yankees in 2021, when that happened, when he was, when he was a bona fide all-star great season, the Yankees finished 19th overall in runs. So <clears throat> I think that, you know, 711 runs uh, compared to, the 2022 uh, output of 807 runs. It took a mammoth performance uh, to really generate this much more offense. And obviously everyone in that lineup fed off him uh, being so productive every at bat. Uh, but, you know, this is what we can kind of expect throughout his career. Uh, he had hit for even a higher average than he ever has before. So um, let's just consider he that he's going – let's just assume that he's going to hit around 40 home runs next season. And what does that mean? Well, <clears throat> if we look at our average draft position, he's ranked number six overall. You would be using your first-round pick on Aaron Judge as a 31-year-old coming into next season. And though I think – obviously he was the best batter in baseball, no one could keep track with, of, with him um, in any regards. But I don't think that he's worth your first round pick only because, yes, there are health concerns, but more because there are outfielders all the way down and like in the 200s, past the 100s, past the 200s that I think have the opportunities to win MVPs in their respective leagues. And let's kind of like dig into this. So I think this season coming up that first base is the most scarce position in all of fantasy baseball. So. I though I love Aaron Judge. Let's go and just look at our top first baseman going down through Paul Goldschmidt. Let's just say, and he's overall ranked number forty-one. There's not one player uh, below uh, overall ranking of forty-one that I trust to play first base, and I have to have a first baseman to you know to operate and exist and play fantasy baseball. So it's like you absolutely have to get a first baseman in the first couple of rounds, or else you are like out of luck because there's not. There's really no first baseman even coming up, um, you know, this next year as absolute top prospects. So super scarce position. That's one reason why I wouldn't go um, Aaron Judge. Same thing. If I look over at third base, if it gets down to around Austin Riley, I love Bobby Witt Jr., but these are all players in the top 60 that I think have the opportunity to match his production. And when I look over at outfield – Aaron Judge is number or is ranked number six overall. And kind of what I talked about, like out, if you go outside of the top 40, there's not one first baseman that you can grab that I have confidence in. But I can go outside of the top 40, outside of the top 40 and just um, outfield and realize that, okay, Julio Rodriguez, I think at 22 years old, um, can absolutely win an MVP. Mike Trout at 31 years old was more productive per at bat than Aaron Judge, and he's at 51. And I go down to number 129, even like I'm just scrolled by a lot, a lot of guys. I think a lot of these guys, but like 
Luis Robert and Aloy, Aloy Jimenez both have the opportunity and both have the uh, pedigree to win an MVP if they can stay healthy for a season. There's kind of a, a similar trend here. <clears throat> Taylor Ward, when he came up healthy and when he like didn't have a concussion and shoulder issue, uh, was the most productive player at the outfield position for his stint when he came up. Uh, the 195 spot, if you look up here at Oscar Gonzalez, is the outfielder for uh, Cleveland, who's 25 years old. When last season um, or when he was in the minors, he had 31 home runs across 400 at bats. So that's like on pace to be a 40 plus home run guy. Like you can go down even the list and Byron Bucks in 2021 uh, was the highest. Uh, he's at 267 or 276. Byron Bucks then as Minnesota's three hole hitter a number one selection a couple of years ago for Minnesota. Um, he averaged this season per, uh, if he would have gotten his standard 550 at bats, he would have hit 50 plus home runs this season. He was the highest home run per at bat per plate appearance player in 2021 as well. He just can't stay on the field. It's kind of a similar uh, thing here, but Aaron judge does not have a, a healthy history. Like let's look at his career. So <clears throat> we look at, specifically, um, you know, uh, games played 60 games in um, 2020, and he missed uh, – he only played half of them. Um, last season, he was – this was his most healthy year. He had one small IL stint, it looks like, in 2021. But after even before that, 2019, 102 games, 112 games, 155 games. The last time that he was healthy for an entire season uh, was in 2017. You know, I don't have to remind you that that's five years ago. There's a lot of wear and tear on a 31 year old coming into the season, you know, compared to a 26 year old. So these are the things that kind of strayed me away from Aaron Judge's upcoming season, just because again, he doesn't have a whole lot working for, for him and around him. Obviously, if he's you, you are always drafting players as independent pieces, not worrying about what's around them in the lineup. But like the offense around him is so bad that he's going to have to have that level of productivity or else if he drops down to his magnificent average numbers, which we can look at again in 2021, he's only going to have 89 RBIs and 98 or 89 runs, 98 RBIs and 40, almost 40 home runs uh, by himself, which is incredible. But you can see how this limitations and productivity around his lineup, which was basically the same in 2021 and 2023 season next year, um, is going to inhibit his productivity. So as always, um, I have this spreadsheet uh, available to you guys to kind of look through. If you guys are interested in any of the numbers, this is a Google sheet. I have the, the link in the comments. Please let me know if you guys have any questions whatsoever. Um, I love you all. Happy baseball season. And I will talk to you very soon.